did you know that these light strips have individually programmable lights? That's right, every single one of these you can program, which means you can add stunning effects to your wearable technology. My name is Christine. If you haven't been here before, my channel is all about creating fun and creative wearable technology projects. I've also written a book and this will talk you through learning all the basics of soft circuits through to some fantastic ESP32, a little bit more challenging projects. Today, I'm going to talk you through what items we need. So what are the materials to make this circuit? I'm going to show you how to hook up the circuit. And then I'm also going to show you the code and how you can edit the code. So these are the three main things we're looking at. Let's jump right in. Let's start with the items you need for today's circuit. We're going to start with our ESP32. And this little guy here is a basic dev module. So it's going to be nice and simple. This is also a slightly cheaper board because you just need something simple to get up and running. So this is just called a dev module. We're also going to use one of these guys here. This here is our breadboard. And then the star of the show are these little light strips that I showed you earlier. We're going to be using these. There are several different types. This one here is a pretty standard kind of inexpensive one. They are regularly spaced apart, but we can also get some of these fun, funky circle styles. And again, these also come in different sizes. You can even get these larger ones and you can also get larger flexible ones. The other thing we're going to need is some hookup wires. So here we have just a, um, a different sample. So I use black for ground, red for power, and then a different color for data. Let's have a look at our breadboard. They do come in different sizes, different colors. This is the one we're using today. It has tracks. So you have tracks running across this way, and you also have tracks running up and down this way. So this board can be used to put our ESP32 in it. So if you'll have your ESP32 handy, what I like to do is make sure the connecting area here kind of hangs off the edge a little bit. I don't know if you can see that up here a bit better. So we've got ground, three volt, and D15 are the pins I'm going to be using. So what I'm going to do is on here, I want access to these. This is a little wide for the breadboard, so I'm going to make sure my pins reach all the way to this end. And that way we have a little bit of space at the top here. If you do have a wider breadboard, that's great. You can just use that. So make sure that is pressed in evenly and snug. And now what we want to do is add the power and the ground connections. So with our board now onto the breadboard, we're going to find the power, we're going to find the ground, and we're going to find D15. And those we're going to connect with some wires. I am going to use three different colors. So I'm going to use red for power, black for ground, and then I'm going to choose a white one for data. So you can see the first one's three volts. So what we're going to do is put this in that very first pin. Okay, so it's connected in that first pin right where the three volt is. And then I'm going to put it into our power rail, which means because this is connected, now all of these ones along here will have power once our board is switched on. So now we're going to do the same for ground. So I'm using a black wire. I'm going to put it in the ground pin in our breadboard. And then I'm going to put it into the ground rail as well on our breadboard. So now we've got power and ground to these two rails. So this is what it will look like. We've got power, we've got ground. So it goes along these rails. I'm using D15 on the board, and then I'm going to now put it into one of these rails so we can use it for several. This is essentially the ESP32 is now hooked up. And what you will also need is a data cable so make sure you have a cable that does data and not just power, or you will not be able to upload to your board. So before we plug it in, I'm going to take some of my NeoPixels here, some of these WS2812s. And what we're going to do with these now is find, usually on the reverse, it will say, or on the very front, what you're looking for is these arrows. So mine are traveling in this direction, which means data in, data out. So you can hook up even more. You can use the data out, pin these to someone else's D15 
data in, for example. So I'm now connecting just with some of my jumper wires for um, power, ground, and data. And always check your individual light strip that you're using. So some of them have them in different orders. This one is going power, data, ground. Always check because you don't want to break your lovely pixels. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to plug in power and ground. First, I always do ground first and always make sure that your board is not powered at the moment. So our board is not powered, but we're gonna take the black wire and I'm gonna put it in my ground rail, which is this lower rail here. Then I'm gonna take power, which is my red wire, and I'm going to put it in the power rail at the top. So now it will have power and ground, but we also wanna program it. So we've got our little data, which we know is gonna be in this white area here. You can see now, all we've done is taken three wires. Each of these will only ever take three wires, which is fantastic. We can now plug our board in and get it programmed. Before we do that, I would love to just show you a few different types that you might find and you might be interested in. So we have this here is our sort of standard looking um, pixel strip. You can see how they're spaced apart, but you can also get them and in a much closer configuration. So these ones are spaced really close together. This one also has one of these weatherproofing strips. As I mentioned, we can have these lovely little circle designs, but you can also get squares, full on matrixes. That's another great style. There's also different options. I'm actually gonna do a video just on these amazing things, but look at this one here. It is super thin and it's got this thin, thin wire. And then you can just completely bend and move these to shape for your wearable. Some of these are a little more difficult to work with than others. For example, when you're starting out with making a project, what you can do is you can actually cut, do you see that little white line? You can cut it there and then you can solder these. So these can be, you can have a few, you can have a longer piece, cut them to fit your project. But when you're using these ones, they're much easier to solder than if you went for one of the other types that had a really tight connection. So for this one here, if you wanna solder it, you still can, and you can cut it here, but this is a much smaller solder area compared to this one, for example. So now that we can see our arrow is going in this direction, that is the direction we want. We can now upload our code and power the board. So with our code running, we can see we've got this pretty funky effect. I absolutely love using these guys, as you can see. What you can do as well is if this is a little too bright for your wearable or fashion tech item, what you can do is when you put your fabrics on top of it, you can just diffuse the lights slightly. So again, just depending on how thick your fabric is or how close the lights are to it, you can get a few different diffusion effects. So this is just one of the basic strips. And what I'll do is I'll just show you how some of the other ones can look because we've got a few fun ones like this mini strip. Look how tiny this one is, absolutely adorable. If you're not powering off, then make sure you always connect ground first, but I would highly recommend powering off. So here we can see the difference in the sizes. Regular sized one that you will come across on stores, but this little guy here, these are referred to as 2020s. So they're half the size of these guys. And they can be a really nice way to add just a little light to your projects. Same thing to mention is if you are going to be soldering these, you will have a smaller area to cut and a smaller area to solder. See if we can get this bad boy matrix working. So this is uh, definitely a lot more color. And this one is flex, which is super cool as well. So that might be nice, maybe on a handbag or something. Again, you might want to diffuse it slightly. So I would just use a piece of felt or similar, and you can just get really nice, gentle colors. Great way to add color and interactivity to your projects. We'll have one last look at one more. Let's plug in one of the circular guys. Let's just have a little look. Here's our lovely circle as well. 
So these can add a lot of bling to your projects. Let's have a look at the code. Some of the main things you'll have to change are going to be always change the number of LEDs. You make sure you count those. And then in the code, you'll need to just add how many lights you're using. You'll also need to edit the pin number. So whichever pin number that you've been using for your ESP32, in our case, we did use the D15 pin. We'll make sure it is 15. You don't need the D for digital. So we're just using pin 15. If you are choosing an analog pin, typically you do need to include A. So if you also pinned yours with pin 15, you might only need to change, for example, the number of lights that you've used. The library that I'm using here is called Fast LED. It's a really pared down library, but it includes all the fun things you might need, like this lovely rainbow effect. There's also a lot of sample code included. So what you'll probably want to do is fire up some of those files and have a look at some of the different effects you might want to choose. So this one here is part of their fire example. So that one's fire. And this effect here is called color palette. So it's sort of looping through a bunch of different colors and a bunch of different effects. This one here is color effect. So this is probably one of my favorite sample files because it really goes through many different effects. So basically all I'm saying is have a play around with it. See what it works for your project. I will be talking through some of the projects that I'll be using some more of these lights with. So I have some other fun and exciting projects coming and you might want to use these in your projects too. Thank you for watching. Don't forget, please like and subscribe.